anyway, give us the background of why you went into the closure of shops for a week. Uh, Michael, I would never want you to brand me as if I am the one mobilizing Ugandans not to pay taxes. That is not fair. I am one of the Ugandans mobilizing Ugandans. Please let us pay taxes. Mm -hmm. Government cannot sustain itself without the indigenous Ugandans paying taxes. That is the truth. In good faith. The issue of business community coming out uh, the last two weeks, uh, issue of IFRIS. I want to assure you, have you ever had any Ugandan complaining about VAT for the last 15 years? The 18%? No one has been complaining. Every Ugandan has been paying, has been comfortable, has been doing their normal businesses. When this man called IFRIS comes in, on 2021, we are accepting always, when government comes with a position, we shall accommodate it, but we are stakeholders. We must be listened to. When IFRIS came into existence, it went to Narumanya, Nesarumanya. Meaning, the tax collector, because the tax collector is going to enforce, is, he has a target. For example, you are going to see someone called Michael. He's a manager somewhere. Yes. They're going to give him a target. We need 200 million from Michael. We need 200 million from Hassan. We need 200 million from so and so. When you go on ground, you are going to begin issuing penalties because people are not using the IFRIS machine. My brother, the person selling me the IFRIS machine is your cousin. Get me right on this thing. Mm -hmm. You will not buy an IFRIS machine other than Michael's cousin who is selling it to me. That's number one. Number two, the, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> the machine costs five million shillings. You get it? My business, I'm not an IT person, I'm a day-to-day, -day, hand to mouth. Ordinary I'm, business. Ordinary businessman, my capital is three, four million shillings. My sales are 300, 400, it depends. I can make or I cannot make. I need someone who knows how to use this machine. That's another cost. In a shop of Kampala, we have four people or five people renting a shop. Here's for Michael, this is for Uhuru, this is for John, that's for, 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 for Kisuvi, and this is for someone else. Are you going to put Ifris in every... Every corner where yeah. somebody is operating? The, shops, oh, give them one the shop says Michael Enterprises. It gets a license for one, for one shop, not... Those uh, small lockups, sub tenants. Sub mm. So there's no equity there. Two, we must welcome the new ways of taxation. We are part of, of the system. But if you are, a, and what they did, they went even beyond that. When you are a, went on ground, it even went to arrest boxes, a mere box. If you accept, I can show you a, a video of a URA officer in Arua Park. They arrested someone's box of clothes. He paid URA 800,000, just 800,000. But the insasage that came up in the town, the, the bullets that were not necessary because of 800,000 shillings. Actually, I even came out, I said, mm -mm, this is now beyond because I must protect my government. I can't accept such to happen in the city. I went to the URA officer. I asked the lady, Madam, what is the problem? Why all this fracas? She says, no, these people are free. I said, please. I caught the... I went beyond my level, my, my, my... Your power. My powers. I told the gentleman, you have paid your receipt. Quite a Mario Genda. Because the, the situation had gone out of hand. So I had to do that. Well, but... To, to, to quell the, the kind of situation that happened. I went back to their bosses. I told them, gentlemen, we don't need such. And however, I want to thank the URA Commissioner General. He came himself to, the, to Chikubo, talked to the business committee, engaged another meeting, engaged in another meeting before the lockdown at UMA. Did they tell you what happened in UMA? Blows went on, on at UMA because the Commissioner General had told the media team to first move out. And that's where the 
traders put there. Yes, they could. They said, no, why are you hiding? Let us be open. But I want to thank the Commissioner General. Whenever you call him on issues of the business committee, he has been hands-on, but with no power. I want to take you a little back. What is wrong with IFRIs? Because according to URA, this is just a system uh, to, to, to show tax returns, to show what, as traders, what is wrong with IFRIs that you people are complaining about? We are complaining about, one, it's not fair. If I buy from a manufacturer, if I, let me give you a scenario like me. Mm -hmm. I import rice. Yes. From Dubai, from India, from Pakistan, from any country. The moment it lands in, in, in Mombasa, there are rates of URA, values. They give you pay value, such and such, you pay 80 or 100 million a container. You pay VAT, you pay withholding tax, you pay all the taxes that you need before clearing your good in Mombasa. When you leave Mombasa, meaning you have already paid all taxes required by URA. You get it, my brother? Yes. You reach now Malaba. You are going to get an officer, inspector there, who says, I want 100% verification. That is a tax also. I'm coming to that. 100% mm -hmm. verification, meaning you're going to offload your container and count item by item, item by item. Later, he tells you, top up. Are you hearing that word? Top up. Top up meaning you paid less taxes. You get it? Even when you had paid everything. And it is compulsory. The figure he gives you is non... What you pay? Non-negotiable. You will pay the taxes, the top up. You are going to pay the loaders and offloaders who have... Who have... Uh, nini. Is that just in some circumstances or it that's what Always happens? that's what happens. The business community is being treated in... I don't know how I should put it. So... When you live there, which means you have paid you 18%, you have done what? Now, when I come to the shop, you want 18% again. After me paying, you want me, it is me to decide if I'll charge you 18% or not. Things in Kampala, Kampala is like, have you been to Dubai? You have been to China? I've been to Dubai. It is a business city and it is bargaining. I give you an iPhone for, uh, for $1,000, another will give an iPhone for $800. Another one's going to give you for five hundred dollars. It is up to you to choose what you want. Yes. So the business community in town, that's how they are. Been to be a kuyaula njaulo. Ifris cannot work on that because we sell at different prices. And me, I'm comfortable if I can make one thousand shilling profit. I'm comfortable and make a turnover. I'm comfortable. Then you selling one phone, you are selling it a whole day. But me, I'm selling ten phones of a difference of, of one thousand, one thousand. I'm benefiting. If it says, mm -mm, there we shall stop those brokers. Because you have to issue an receipt. So the price becomes higher. Give an example, mere sodas that we are buying. It comes out from the factory, already paid 18% VAT. You get to the, to the, agent, to the wholesaler, buy a soda at 18,500. Uncle they're going to give you a penalty of 6 million shillings. Are you aware about that? They have given the communities issue of six, six million penalties, 12, 12 million penalties. That's when people went bazak. And I had to join them on that cause. I said, ladies and gentlemen, these people have an issue. We've these had enough. Have an issue. We went to Minister of Finance to explain to them. Nobody could take action other than His Excellency. I hear traders still complaining about paying taxes. Uh, for items being measured in kilograms. Simba Wakati. What is wrong with that? Are you buying meat? Are you buying clothes? Let's be honest. We are not selling meat. This is not a butcher. Where in this world have you seen clothes being priced in kilos? Let's be honest. So, a container of what Jora? Vajitachi? Yes. Jora is called what? Murzungu? Uh, uh, Jora, that, that's textile. Textile. Mm. You are paying 300, 400 million, my brother. I'm telling you the truth. People want, let me tell you one thing. In this world, oh, in, you see Sudan, just to increase the price of bread, yes. costed him that. Exactly. 
Here in Uganda, we don't want to go to any level of that. We don't need. And I always, at times I think these technocrats, because they're the ones who implement, they misguide the president. But the good thing, I will thank the president. He calls you at any time if he wants information and doesn't use a technocrat and goes on ground. And the reports from the intelligence group, reports from his researchers showed him there's a problem here. And that's why we all went crying to his excellence, Yuri Kagutam Seveni, save us. You are a leader of Kampala Central Division. Yes, I would say the most affected area because it is the True. highest uh, business operation area in the True. country. You are a leader and you need the taxes yourself. The traders are complaining about paying In kilos. trading license again. Ah, to, to URA. No one is complaining. No, about. this is the complaint. Okay. They pay some money to URA. They pay other monies to KCCA. Then they pay to collect Kasasilo. So yeah. someone asks, yeah. how can we pay KCCA money to manage the city? And again, the same KCCA through Uhuru and their other workers come to charge us money for collecting garbage. I... There are a number of, you no, see, no. I heard of Ifris, then measuring in kilograms. My brother Michael. Uh, the, the, the manufacturers coming as, to do as business. As KCCA, yes. it's our mandate to, to collect garbage. That's our mandate. Yes. When people pay trading license, mm. it's our mandate to render services, to make sure this city is clean by sweeping it, by collecting garbage. Yes. But again, you come back and ask them. I, I am coming to that point. The issue is, I already told you, we don't have trucks, enough trucks. We don't have enough trucks. That's number one. Is the trader supposed to be blamed for that? No, no the trader is not supposed to be blamed. So you, you come and again charge him money. What we did, we decided to get service providers. We have Nabugabo, Home Clean, and so on and so forth. Who charge me, me no money. Well, but it's not a lot of money. But that cost is supposed to be KCC, is supposed to be rendering that service. That's already a weakness to us. So how, how do you handle that? Did you see? I, how now, are handling it? Uh, I have the answer. In your position as a leader now, how are you helping this way? Because they are how? complaining about paying that license to you as KCCA. I agree. And again, they're coming back and... Mr. Michael, I yes. agree with all due respect. Issue is just one. I told you devolution of powers. The moment we have the devolution of powers, all this will never be there because I'm answerable now. Because me as the mayor, they're going to ask me these things that you're asking me. They are not going to ask any of the technical team or a minister this. They are going to say, Mayor Salim Uhuru, your job is supposed to be this. I'm going to explain. You get a disadvantage, I have to explain because I'm the one in office. So, it is true, people are paying trading licenses. Mm -hmm. People are paying a figure, a standard figure for URA, which they have not been complaining. Mm -hmm. They have been paying for garbage, they have been paying... For garbage, they are complaining. Garbage, they are complaining. Let's, let's be honest. Yeah. They, are, they are complaining. But why? Why You are, you are supposed to, to, to be paying. It's true. We shall have a solution to that, but not now. You saw Kitezi is already full. You are looking for a, another place in Mukono. The community in Mukono have refused. They don't want garbage there in Mukono. So we are looking for another plan Z. But already we have land bought by KCC. We are going to be dumping Kasasilo. The land that we have already is the Mokono. But the community have come out and said, mm -mm. You can do something else here, but not Kasasilo. So the complaints have been IFRIs, uh, paying in kilos, um, that issue of three taxes. And value. You are, uh, the value uh, the, like, for example. Then the other thing is. Value. Mm. The value is high. Michael, are you aware you can get a paying Koni in Dubai at three, four thousand mm dollars? -hmm. Are you aware? I didn't know. You, you I've can, not thought about no, Mpeng Koni yet. Can get it. No, I'm just telling you. <laughs> yeah. Even in uh, UK, a mere small accident on a car, they take it to an insurance, to the, to the, they call it those places, the press cars. Mm. You can go and buy it there even at 100 pounds. Because for them, they don't want that car anymore. But when you bring it here, they have the value of the cars. The value of the car is, they'll give you not less than 20,000 US dollars. And that's what they're going to bill you. That's why you see the cars. Regardless of the, the state of the country. Two, there's a, someone called the UNBS who disorganizes people also. When you have paid all this, UNBS also comes with this certificate. Uh huh. Seize. Non compliant. All this should have been in one center. You are going to certify UNBS, 
you are going to certify your URA, you are going to certify a certificate or whatever you need, all in one center. The other complaint we had not talked about is uh, foreigners that come expected to do manufacturing, but they end up hawking or opening up shops to retail level, sell their uh, products at a retail level. Traders have this complaint. Somebody would look at it as not a problem. How is it a problem, you being part of the business? No, it is a problem. It is a problem to Ugandans. Once you're a manufacturer, meaning you manufacture, then you give to a wholesaler. From a wholesaler, you give either to an agent and then to the consumer. So if you're a manufacturer and you come direct to a consumer, it's unfair. You've taken away business from very, very many people China. along the chain. And the community are crying for someone called the Chinese. Chinese, first and foremost, it's very hard to compete with him, number one. The loan he gets is gets it at 3% or 2% from China. You go to China, import from there, from the factory where he is already part of the factory, bring to Uganda. He opens a factory in Uganda because the privilege the government has given to foreigners is, and the president's uh, prayer is always encouraging people to manufacture yes. in the country, whereby people can get jobs, people can get opportunities and cheap products. But now, the disadvantage is when they have opened their, their factories in Uganda, they compete with the local indigenous Ugandan, whereby... They're selling the same product. The same product Somebody has paid all the price. taxes. If you go to Ben Kiwanuka Street, William Street, there are shoes that are being sold. Yes. Niginas. You see a Chinese also... Tano 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 Tano. Eh? To that level. Mm. Mm -mm. And he has manufactured it. He has manufactured it here. So... We see there's no equity. We need to protect Ugandans because that is our job. However, I want to thank the Kasita and uh, Futa business community leaders. There were, there were some Indians moving with radios, TVs. in Others with phones, by the way. With phones. And they were arrested by the business community themselves, which was very good. Is there a law that supports that? There's no law. That gives them mandate to arrest anyone? No, it doesn't give... because. Uganda is actually the best country, I think, in the world. Because you, you are free to do any sort of business you wish. But now, when you see these big companies selling TVs, radios, and you come, how you have put, uh, come in with your TV and radio and then competing with the local person, and cheaper, because they're paying rent, they're paying electricity, they're paying uh, all the services. But you come without paying anything and a cheaper rate, which means those people are not going to sell. So the business community came out and said, no, where did you get these things from? They wanted to know the source, how it came in the country, and how they began. You, you, you talk of equity. The business people still complain about tax waivers government gives to these foreign business people that come here. What is your view about them? We need to attract them to come. My brother, the president in the last meeting we were in at Entebbe, he told the Ugandans, the local uh, indigenous Ugandans, please, Come and ask for land. Come and I give you the land. Come and I give you tax waivers also. He told them. It is true. They are being given free land. They are giving them all opportunities. But it is not limited to them. benefiting as much when they give them such priorities. You get it? So the Ugandan said, if you are giving them tax holidays, you are giving them time, time of all this, how do you compete with them? Won't you be looked at as xenophobic traders? Not as such. Mm. Not true because business is competition. Business is competition. And uh, competing how, that's why you see the Indians, they'll make sure even a one shilling discount is a goal to them. Okay. So you go meet the president. Yes. And you come back, open the shops. The video was all over the world of you telling people what the president was saying. Yes. You were in the meeting. Give us a picture in just two, three minutes before we go to something else. Whoever left State House left smiling. Hmm? Because number one, the president, when he, when he just arrived, he said, Tuka Kunsonga. Hmm. Those were his words. Tuka Kunsonga, Tolandaga. Totally. Hmm? The first person that presented was the chairman Kasita, um, Dr. Musoke. Yes. Then uh, chairman Kavanda. Hmm then Katongo, then the rest. He said, come to the point, what do you want? The president already, in his wisdom, 
called the commissioner general. He already saw a problem. He said, now, why is it you charge from the entry point? You charge from manufacturing point? You charge from, urgent, from uh, up to the grassroots. Grass Already he saw it. He said, mm -mm. I, want, right. I want to discuss with my technical team. You people, Magala Mfune was sent. Because we, we to, we, you need to pay taxes. And we told him we are going to mobilize more people to pay taxes. Because if you see the figure, out of 3.5 million registered taxpayers, it's only one million paying. Are you aware about that? Yes. One million is a drop in an ocean. So let us, ra let us raise the one million to four million Ugandans paying taxes. But paying, uh, uh, how do I put it? Paying a fair price of taxes. Whereby government can render services to the people also. So when the president told the commissioner, no, we need to sit with the technical team and the minister of finance on the 24th of which I'm sure they sat. They sat. Among yeah. your people, there were voices who were saying, we also want to be there. We should send representatives in that meeting. Uh, that did you manage? No, we did not manage, but it would have been best because the technical team mm. is on the issue of we need money. Which in, 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 any, in any way, we need the money. <laughs> the president, I can be very sure, he already knows what to do. On the 7th, people are already excited in town. People are going to close the shops in town on the D-Day okay. to that be in Kololo. What is your expectation? Or your, actually, uh, your prayer is known, but what are your expectations of the meeting on Monday with His Excellency the President? Because he met you and other technical people in the Ministry True. of Finance yes. on the 24th, like he told you. Yes. You don't know what these people told him. We don't know. <laughs> so, but we have the idea oh, because... Oh, what are your expectations? I saw the Commissioner General emphasizing the goodness in IFRIS. He never talked of any negativity in it. As a taxman, as a head of the URA, he had to support... His Market job. his system. Exactly. Which is, which is right in his way. But with the community down there... I'm telling you, my brother Michael, we are going to be, how should I put it? It's going to affect us so much. I am lot because, for example, whenever I move in town, everything, they put the blame on now. It now goes political. What our opposition do, that is political capital. That is political capital for them to use. You have seen them coming out on radios, on TVs, on what, on, on, on TikTok, on what. They use it as political capital now. And me, I said, no, that's not true. There's something going to come out. It's true, there was a challenge, there's a mistake. Let us sort it out. The technical people met the president after you people had now come back to your, to your shops. Yes, and open. What do you think they told him about their own ifries and the system? I tell you, God is my witness. Mm they will not support any business community. They are going to insist, they are going to praise their VAT, exactly. they are going to insist on IFRIS, they are going to tell the president how it is, how if we, it's not there, you are losing money, which, which, which is not true. We so have, what do you expect the president to tell you I, in the I, meeting on money? Me, I want to tell the president the following. We have other sources of money where we can collect the money. We must embrace other people to pay taxes. The issue of squeezing the one million people, taxpayers, and then you go to Nalumanya and Nelsalumanya, giving penalties. Just immediately, penalty. My capital is three million. You are giving me a, a penalty of six million. Gentlemen, this is not fair. It's not fair. If the president says, according to my gatherings, if this is okay, all that you people are paying is fine on Monday. And we're going to buy a shirt at 300,000 shillings. Oh my God. Because now I, I know how you people will now turn against us, the consumers. I am telling you, if the president does that, I'm just going to do this. Quiet and just see what you can answer. Because I'm sure, um, with already the meeting with his president, with, with his excellence, already I saw the picture where he's driving and I gave him a distinction. He already saw what is burning the Muntua Wansi. Mm. Already he saw that. And I'm confident, I'm on UBC, he watches UBC. Do you know that? That's his favorite TV. I know. 
he watches it and is listening to his 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 his, his, his uh, district chairperson of NRM Kampala Central, the only mayor of Kampala Central who loves his party, who is going to protect his government in this uh, in these uh, five years, he's not going to come with saying pay Ifris Mwena. He's going to come with a solution either from the factory level, entry level, down Ifris Abana, they call them Abayiriba. They will not pay. That I can be sure of. Maybe if the, Mr. the Commissioner General has convinced, convinced him beyond a reasonable doubt that Omuri, Omui, oh, Omuiribi. Omuiribi must pay, that's when he has say you have done a disservice to his president. You have done a disservice. You don't like the president. You don't like this government. You want us to be out of this, of this chair. Okay. You look shocked with my words. I'll give you a call on Monday in the <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> I, I may even be there in call of myself. Please. What would be your message to URA? They have had ugly encounters with people. I won't give you one scenario. We, 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 we lost lives in West Nile. Well, thank you. Bullets. Yes, we had this scene. I, I saw people uh, complaining. Actually, it took the State Minister for National Guidance, Wondre Bokabianga, to drive to the border in Kasese. True. To quell the situation there. Now, here in Kampala, the same voices. You were telling us a scenario. What would be your message to URA? I'm going to be honest with you, and this I've been talking to the commissioner, and I'm still going to tell you, because other people are watching. Mm. I don't want any Ugandan to be intimidated. How are you intimidated? The moment you, these young chaps come in your office with their tags, uh, URA, they come with a patrol of eight, ten military soldiers. Please do not intimidate Ugandans. We stopped that during our Abote's days and Amin's days. That's why you see, we can sit with generals and laugh and clap, but that kind of picture, I do not like it. Do not intimidate Ugandans because you want taxes. No, I want you to be free and fair. You come to my place, identify yourself, I am so and so from URA. Do you and you ask what you want? Make then, me understand what I should. But when you come with the soldiers, you are closing my business. It's not your business, my brother. But even you, KCCA, you have such people. Well, Very you, brutal, by the way. It's not your business. This is my business. I'm paying taxes. I'm paying you. The moment you do that in Sasage already, people are running. It shows Orimu Bikondo. You know that picture. We don't need it. No. This is our country, this is our, 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 our government. Did you report that to the president as well? That's why he stopped it. Do you know what he stopped? Mm -hmm. He said, I'm, I'm giving a directive, interim order of IFRIS. He has not suspended it. He gave an interim suspension of IFRIS for the two weeks. I've listened to an advert. First, wait, I'm giving you all the three, and then you go to that. Mm -hmm. After interim suspension of IFRIS, that is, no more arresting the one inch, no more intimidating the one inch. I passed near Chikuba, I didn't see the police officers. Nobody, people are happy. No more paying the penalties that have been giving the 6, 12, 18 million. No more. All those were suspended. Which means already he took a, a, a decision and even said, Temugamba, I have suspended if there is no interim. Interim meaning. For, for just, a, for just a, a period of time. Yes, let me consult, let me do this and come out with the final findings for Ugandans. And that is on the 7th. You are a leader in this country, a senior one at that. There are some people who say we have not exhausted other sources of revenue as a country. That is why we are falling onto the traders. We are now going for land. There are other taxes that are being suggested that may be approved by parliament anytime. Mm. What do you think? People think we have not taken good use of the tourism, the, the, the gold that we have, and things like that, and all that. You, you know, do you agree with them? I agree. Uganda is blessed. Uganda can be, we can generate more money from our real Ugandans than begging, because you know now most of our donors have put a bit of some nutty, which is okay. How do you say nutty is okay? It is okay. We shall mobilize the funds. The president came out and said we shall mobilize Ugandans to pay money mm. but now a ugandan will want to pay money that is worth being paid you don't expect me to make a profit of hundred thousand and pay you 80. i'm not working for government i'm working for my family to be happy 
and I must give back to the government to get services from the government. That's what I expect. But now here, with IFRIS, I am direct working for the government. Direct. Two, there are other sources of, of money that government can generate, really, in good faith, without all the time increasing the fuel, increasing what, increasing... We shall look for alternatives that people will be, from the numbers of one million, I told you, we shall generate four million people paying instead, whereby people are happy. And the moment, let me tell you, my brother, the moment the business community is happy b making business, they don't look at the, about the political atmosphere. They will never look at it. If someone is hungry, you are in danger. That is already, you are bringing instability. He's going to do business. You are making him uncomfortable. That's already bringing instability. You are bringing insecurity. Instability, insecurity already to Ugandans. You have a, we have a challenge of the youth. We're trying to empower them. Yes. We have programs of government to, em, or, or, to remove people from poverty. I want to see the impact people moving from poverty. You get it? So those programs are there. I'm just, my prayer is one and only one that already the president had decided on to zero on those and we go back to work. Let Ugandans go back to work. Let Ugandans be happy. Let them come up and support the NRM government 2026 for the better of everybody. But not to squeeze them. They cry. No, everyone is crying. Even an NRM is crying. You are you aware about that? I didn't know. Uh -huh. Everyone is crying. People think you guys are happy. People who used to import 10 containers, 20 containers are importing 2, 3. Do that research. Is it because of the taxes? Well, well no. Because of the taxes. I can't work for URA. No way. There's no way I can work for URA. I'm working for me and my family and pay a return back to government for being op operating in a conducive area, uh, environment. Because the environment, the NRM has put the business community, there's no more bullets, there's no more harassing people. You can work. But now when you come intimidating me with the military and what, the, there's, the, the car called Rapid something, something. They come, they intimidate, just the Mere look of the team of URA, you begin shivering. You get, uh, running stomach. You get it. We, we don't need that. We don't need that. And I'm there to protect the Wanainchi, protect my government, and we don't need that kind of behavior. Let me start with the traders, your colleagues. What would be your message to them as we wait for Monday? My fellow uh, business community in, uh, in Uganda, whole of Uganda, first I want to thank them for being calm. They came out last time because they wanted to be heard. And I supported them and I thanked them. Thank you for coming out to be heard. And we are heard. Ever since the meeting with His Excellency Yuri Kagutam Seveni, business has gone to, uh, to normal. People, people actually celebrated in town with these mini directives that he came out with. Two, our prayer on the 7th. That's why you see everyone is going to close their shops on that day because they're waiting. It is either the good news or the bad news. But I'm confident the president is going to come out with the good news. He's going to come out with a win-win situation. The president, there's no way he can come and squeeze fellow Ugandans. He loves Ugandans. He cannot do that. And he loves, if he comes out with an iron hand to the business community, meaning he's not going to get money. People are going to close shops. Government is not going to get money. Then it's a challenge. So we're going to do, I'm sure he's going to come with a win-win situation. Already, the, the mini directive he has come out with, he's going to come out with a final answer. I don't know what answer, but I know it will be at manufacturing level. Mutua Wansi, do you not need to pay this 18% IFRIS? No. What is your prayer to the president? Your Excellency, <laughs> the President of the Republic of Uganda, my name is Salim Uhuru. I'm the only NRM mayor of Kampala Central, the district chairperson of NRM Kampala Central. My prayer is... You already took a decision, an interim uh, decision. I pray with the wisdom I know you as someone who thinks ahead of everyone. The moment we sat with you in that meeting, just took you two minutes to decide on that. Kindly, for the good of Ugandans, the goodness of, the, of our business community. We want to pay taxes. No one doesn't want to pay taxes. We want IFRIS. I'm telling you I'm behind IFRIS, but equity. For IFRIS, let us pay equity. Let it remain at the manufacturing level and the entry point of taxes period let, let us have a conducive 
environment for people to make money. People need to make money. Not to come to His Excellency beg, beg for money. No. This business community will not come to you to ask for money. No. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. The Mayor of Kampala Central Division and the Chairman uh, NRM District of Kampala Central still, and his name is Salim Uhuru Nsubuga Musajja Wakabaka. He's also a businessman, a prominent one in town here, and we were talking to the horse itself, like I said at the beginning. The traders, we also pray for you that you get to smile, because when you don't smile, we, the consumers, are the ones that are going to suffer at the end of the day. You will thump on us and sell everything in double to us. We thank you so much for watching. That is all we had for you. We'll get back and listen to what the president will have shared with the traders come Monday, 7th May, 2024. My name is Michael Jordan Lukomwa with Davis Kamukama and Omding. We wish you the best of the weekend. Bye-bye.